Good afternoon. What we're doing today is a cast iron engine block repair. So we've got an engine block. It's got a crack in it. We need to fix it because they're going to face it off with a mill and get it back on the road or whatever it does, I guess. So we're going to kind of go over the entire process here and then we'll film the, the process of the repair and we'll get you on your way here. So we're going to start right here. When you're welding cast iron, it's a very difficult thing to do. It's prone to cracking. It's got a ton of carbon in it, and as it cools, if it cools too quickly, it will crack. That's why it's so difficult to weld. A lot of people think it's unweldable. That's not true. Gray cast iron is very weldable if you follow all of these parameters. So we're going to start right off the bat with uh, the type of rod, and you're going to use nickel rod. That's what you weld cast iron with. Don't try and weld it with 6010 or 7018. It won't work. You need to have nickel rod, all right? You're also going to need to do a preheat and a post heat. I'm sure if you're in the welding world, you've heard preheat, post heat before. You have to do a preheat and a post heat, or it will cool too quickly and it will crack. All right. You don't just want to heat right at the crack. You want to heat way far away so that that heat can travel through and then slow cool after you're done completing the weld. So before you're welding it, you're going to do a preheat. At the end, you're going to do a post heat to allow that to slow cool. Okay. Grind the crack, right? So you want to grind through the entire crack. I did a mock-up drawing over here. So let's say this is a section out of the cast iron part that's, I don't know, a quarter of an inch thick. So we'll write that down. This is a quarter of an inch thick, let's say. The grinding part, this is your crack. You're going to grind almost all the way through that if you can only get to one side. If you can get to both sides, you're going to grind more than halfway through, so at least an eighth of an inch, if it's a quarter of an inch. Then you're going to flip it after you weld it, grind it into the weld you just did, so more than an eighth of an inch on the other side, and then you're going to weld the other side. So basically you've welded through the entire thing. If you only have access to one side, then you got to grind. Uh, with this cast iron block, you only have access to one side, so we're going to have to grind almost all the way through this, all right? But you want to grind the crack out, weld one side. If you can, flip it, flip it, grind it out on the other side, and weld that side. Also, go back over here to drill. If it's a crack like this, you see these dots right here? You want to drill through the entire thing. So if there's um, stress going down this um, in the line, it's going to go into the circular area of the drill and go back into itself. And it'll keep it from propagating after you weld it. If you don't drill it and grind it, it's going to crack again. Guaranteed, all right? Another thing to be said is, I don't know if you can see this, but the drill is just a little bit past where the crack is. If you're looking at the crack, you can see where the, the crack stops. That crack still goes past that a little bit. You just can't see it with your eye. So you want to make sure your drill is past what you can see with the, with the eye, all right? So just a little bit past what you can actually see. So we got drill down here, and then we're going to um, you're going to weld it then. So once you grind it, drill it, you're going to weld it. After welding and during welding, if you have more than one person, you peen it, all right? What does that mean? You take a ball peen hammer and you tap it while you're doing this. What that does is it stress relief. It, it aids in stress relief so that you don't get cracking. So you're going to have peening. I have a whole crew of guys out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have everybody have a, a job and we're going to kind of uh, team up to tag team this thing and get it done. So some people will be peening. Some people will be, you know, preheating, post heating. We'll have somebody with, um, with a thermometer to make sure that we are where we want to be with our heat. We want to be around four to 600 degrees Fahrenheit, anywhere in there. And once it gets below four, we're going to hit it with the, with the torch again and, and make sure it stays four to 600 degrees. Once you've welded it and you've peened it, you're going to throw a heat blanket on it. That's what we have anyways. But basically you want to make sure it doesn't cool too quickly. So you want to, you can bury it in sand if you wanted to, whatever you have, throw it in an oven if you have an oven. We have a heat blanket and this is a big part so we can't throw it in the oven. So we're going to drape this heat blanket over the top of it and let it cool as slow as we possibly can get it to cool to prevent it from cracking. And just because you get done welding it and you look at it and you think, oh, that's good. You walk away, you can be on the other side of the shop and you hear tink, you're done. You just cracked it. So what we're going to do is show you the engine block now. We'll get out there, show you what it looks like, show you the crack. And they actually tried to do, a, somebody did a, a weld on it before. So that that's there too. So we'll look at that and then we'll get going on this thing. So what we've got going on here is a crack in an engine block. And I'm going to move in here. And you can see there's a weld on it on the side there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move in for a close-up on the crack and then the weld. 
So let's go to the crack here. So this is a close-up of the crack. We're obviously going to try to weld this. The problem is those two little holes there you see, which aren't really a problem at all because they're not threaded. There's probably just water going through that, so we're probably okay if we mess those holes up. If you look to the right of the crack, you can see a little gold color, which indicates that somebody probably tried to braze this at one point. So we want to make sure we get rid of all that before we start um, actually welding on this. So what we're going to go to here is uh, we're going to grind this crack out. That's going to be the first thing you need to do. But first, let's take a look at the weld, the, the existing weld, because we were going to grind that out. But I looked at it real close, and I didn't see any cracks on it. So uh, I figured if it's, if it's not cracked, we might as well just leave it and uh, fix the top part that is cracked. But we'll check out the weld real quick, and then we'll go ahead and grind this thing. So this is a look at the weld that somebody, I have no idea who did it, but somebody else did it. And I guess in this situation, all that matters is did it hold, and it seems like it did. So I'm not going to mess with this because cast iron is such a finicky thing to weld. If it's holding, we're not going to go. We're not going to mess with it. We're going to go ahead and leave it. So what we're going to do now is grind this baby out. So you just sit back and watch me grind. I guess and we'll get into the welding after um, we preheat this thing. But for now, grinding. So what we did here is we ground it out best we could. You want to get almost all the way through the crack so that the weld goes all the way through the crack. We did run into a little bit of porosity in that weld there and you can see there's a little bit of gold still in there. Hopefully we can weld it from the other way and burn that out. But we ground her down as much as we could. We got a little carried away right here. But that's alright because we'll just keep up on the sides. Then we ground off to the edges through the crack. Now normally you would take and drill a hole at the end of the cracks, but it went off the edge of this casting, so we just ground all the way through the crack. We went really deep right here on the end, and also over here by the weld, we went really deep. I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to change the angle. You can see how deep that is. So we went through the, the crack, hopefully. Now, I, in the middle here, it's, it's kind of thin, so we wanted to put the deeper part more here on the edge because that's got a lot more material there. So what we're gonna do now is start the preheating process. We're trying to get this thing to 600 degrees, and we wanna heat not just where we were just looking, but all over this thing so that the heat doesn't stay localized where we're gonna actually weld it. So we're going to get some torches set up here and then continue on this uh, repair here. So before we start welding this thing, I want to give you a little explanation of what's going to happen here. We're going to have about four or five guys and everyone's going to have a different job. Some of them might be peening, preheating, temperature checking, things like that. We're going to heat this thing up to about 400 degrees, uh, 400 to 600 degrees, somewhere in there. And then what we're going to do is we'll take a temperature gauge, make sure it's right, and then we're going to weld it. Then we're going to paint it, so you're going to hit it with a hammer to try and stress relieve it. And then we're also going to have somebody uh, tapping on it pretty much throughout the whole process with a chip and hammer. So things you're going to want to look for are preheat, uh, welding obviously, and then uh, peening. Maybe some grinding here and there, obviously chipping the slag and things like that are going to happen. But the peening is just tapping it with a hammer. That's what you have to do with uh, cast iron. So preheat, post heat, things like that. That's all going to have to be done uh, to weld this engine block. So I just wanted to give you a little preview before um, we do this uh, video it's going to be a little chaotic you don't want cast iron to cool so basically we get right after it and we uh, we start the project and then we go right until it's finished there's no waiting around so it'll look a little chaotic So 
So here's a look at the weld we just got done doing on this cast iron engine. So we just build that up with a little padding. Those are water holes, so they don't really matter. And then uh, this is going to get machined off. I don't know if I'm going to be around to video the machine. I'll try to. So if I get it, I get it. If not, I'll put a video of the final, um, what it looks like when we get it done machine, at least, anyways. Get a picture of it. So it went pretty well. So after we got that engine done and uh, I gave it back to the guy, he actually sent it out to get it machined off, so I never saw it again. So I have no final picture of it machined off. I apologize. But uh, that's all we got for today. We're getting a lot here. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV. Well,